Senator Padilla, you are uh, recognized uh, for your questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, me, uh, first a comment, then a question for uh, the uh, witnesses. Uh, I understand, uh, you know, there's a lot of people saying they'd like to see a reconstruction of the events of January 6th and how they came to be. For anybody uh, genuinely interested, I turn their attention to the House impeachment manager's presentation to the United States Senate from February 9th through the 13th. Um, my questions today, though, are in some ways a follow-up to yesterday's Judiciary Committee hearing where we heard from FBI Director Chris Wray. Uh, and I'm going to quote from his testimony yesterday. Quote, we are not aware of any widespread evidence of voter fraud, much less that would have, that would have affected the outcome in the presidential election. End quote. And yet former President Trump and other people with influence continue to spread lies and disinformation about how uh, the November 2020 election was stolen. Former President Trump continued this effort most recently at the Conservative Political Action Conference uh, on Sunday, falsely claiming, and I'll quote from him, we did even better in the second election than we did in the first. You know, I won the first, we won the second, we did much better. Prior to joining the United States Senate, I served for six years as California Secretary of State, uh, which includes the responsibility of serving as California's Chief Elections Officer for the most populous state in the nation. I know Trump is lying. We all know Trump is lying. FBI Director Ray told us yesterday that one of the biggest challenges the government faces in confronting domestic terrorism is separating the signal from the noise. This was particularly true in the lead up to the January 6th insurrection. When people of influence particularly former and current elected officials continue to spread lies and disinformation about election integrity, I would imagine that creates a lot more noise, unnecessary noise, counterproductive noise, dangerous noise for you all to have to sift through. I suspect it also serves to radicalize some number of people to actually take action, including violent action, just as we have seen for years with jihadist propaganda and other forms of foreign terrorism. So my question for each of you, two questions actually. One, does the perpetuation of disinformation about the 2020 election make your job harder and how? Second, what kind of message does the January 6th insurrection send to other domestic violent extremists and our foreign adversaries as well? I'll start. Uh, I think I'd start with pinpointing the specific uh, thing that just drives somebody to mobilization is very, very, very difficult. And it's probably more complex in the domestic violent extremist space than any other of the terrorism threats we face. And why that is, is what we've found in our investigations is domestic violent extremists not only are potentially doing what they're doing in an insular manner, but it's a combination of an ideology that they have and what makes it different is a very unique personalized grievance. And when those things combine, that appears to be um, what pushes them to mobilization. And so for every single individual, we're trying to find that, but it's incredibly hard and it relies a lot on their ability, you know, post-disruption to explain that process to that. And so that's something we're trying very hard to get to the bottom of on each of these cases. And sir, we, um, we did warn in our National Terrorism Advisory System Bulletin that we assess perceived grievances that are fueled by false narratives could continue to mobilize or incite um, people to commit violence. So to that extent, yes, false narratives are difficult. Are difficult. 
Senator, the Department of Defense does not do domestic intelligence on U.S. citizens, but there's no tolerance for extremists in the ranks of the Defense Department. Secretary Austin, within the first few weeks of taking over as the Secretary, ordered a stand down in the Defense Department, a one day stand down to examine extremism, educate people, and make sure that we're doing everything we can to root that out. Senator, Senator General, I'll, 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 I'll spare you for a second because I want to sure. make sure I, I get some clarity here. Now, I know these issues are complex. Your work is tremendously complex and challenging. But the answer to the first question, based on what I hear, tell me if you disagree, is the question being, does this make your job harder? The answer would be so far, yes, yes, yes. Is that correct? It's twofold, right? It's volume. Any more volume makes it harder. And the more variety of things that inspire people definitely makes pinpointing it to a specific one challenging. And so variety of inspiration combined with amount of rhetoric out there definitely are two things that add. Okay. And in the limited time I have left, I want to make sure we uh, address the second question, which is, you know, what message do you believe this is sending to other domestic violent extremists, let alone foreign adversaries? We do, uh, we do assess that the uh, breach on the Capitol could inspire others to act, if, if that's what you're asking, sir. I agree. Anytime an adversary is successful, others pay attention. And so we're worried that this would be an inspiration. I agree with that. I agree as well, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.